Kickstarter on a shovel head is a handy thing for a multitude of reasons. The most obvious of which is being able to start your bike. However, sometimes your knees and your back don't allow for it, and it's good to have a backup plan when another method's available to you. If you're fortunate enough to have an electric starter, this could get you out of some binds. You do have to remember that this is a maintenance item, and it does need to be dealt with from time to time. But I find the electric starters only half of the electric starting troubles we'll find that the starter solenoid here generally presents more than half the issues we'll find in the electric starting system. More surprising is that it's easy and cheap to maintain. Click in, click out, but no action. Again click in, yeah we hear something happening, but definitely not the desired effect we're looking for. Kill the power, and most people would just assume there's a starter issue. But the solenoid is easier to get to, clean, maintain, and test first, so we're going to take a look at this. There is a chance, of course, it could be the starter, and during such a test, I use my alligator clip to clip onto that positive post there on the starter, and the negative onto this long stud protruding out through the starter. All set up now, it's imperative that that positive connection is not shorted to ground in any way, or it's going to weld to something. And running that test earlier, I was looking at the meter set to DC. And we see no voltage going to the starter while it was engaged. And maybe you are getting 12 volts and it could in fact be your starter. If it is, click the link on the top right. We'll take in my video on rebuilding the starter. But our first order of business is going to be disconnecting the battery on my motorcycle. Admittedly, it is not the easiest thing to access this ground cable for the battery. So I have to remove all of this chrome shielding. And the reason I have to do this is my tray is in such a way that the shielding has to be removed to bring the battery forward. And I lift up the seat with my special AMF tool. And now I could gain access to the negative terminal of the battery. There's enough room to unscrew that. And I'm using a metric 10 because it's a modern battery. And removing that screw, disconnecting the cable. Now we're good. My primary is polished aluminum, so I take precautions. First, putting masking tape as a non-stick tape followed by duct tape as a protective tape over the areas I'm going to be working in case I drop something and mar the finish. This rubber cap is secured in a groove. I go around peeling it off to reveal the connections of the wires. This is our switch connection from the battery to the starter. And this is the low current to the solenoid that facilitates that switch connection. Using a 9 16th wrench, I'm going to break tension on these nuts holding in the high current cables one at a time. If I see the back nut spinning, I'll need two wrenches to do the job. Carefully pull off the different pieces and store them to the side, being sure not to drop them into the motorcycle. Then removing the eyelets from the studs. A 3 8 is used for the solenoid power. Then removing these parts without dropping them and pulling the eyelet off of the stud. All the cables are now disconnected. At this point, I pull the rest of that rubber shield off. Here's what it looks like. And now the cables are fully disconnected from the solenoid. Two bolts hold in the solenoid through a spacer. There's one up top and here's one on the bottom. They'll be loosened with a 7 16 and I want to get several turns from the top one first, and then I'll work on the bottom one in its entirety. As it loosens, the solenoid pushes out because of the spring, so it could be supported with the other hand while we turn it to ensure that it's still perfectly seated while these bolts are loosened. Eventually, it's loose enough to turn with the extension by hand. And I'm not trying to pull the bolts out, I just want to loosen them. I want to keep everything together. So now I'll make my way to the top one. Negotiating around the cables, I'll loosen this one too. So it's still going through everything and nothing's going to fall out or into the motorcycle. I push these cables behind the shift lever to get them out of the way. Or I'll try to anyway. They're a bit finicky. Now with my left hand, I put my fingers on both of those bolts, and the right hand, I hold the spacer 
to hold everything together as I pull out the solenoid in one piece, all parts, including that spring. Nothing dropped, everything together, successful removal. This piece is connected inside the primary and isn't removed, as well as the rubber shroud that goes around it. That'll stay as it is. And we're done with this area for now. The wires are out of the way. We'll make our way over to the other side of the lift and start working on the solenoid. First, a large spring will be pulled out of the center. Then the metal spacer will be removed. Followed by these two bolts and the associated hardware. There are two nuts to remove, this one first using the 3 8 on the switch power. So as I remove it, I'm pulling in an upward motion because I don't want the stud to spin as I turn it. With that small stud to the right, just below it, we're going to remove that nut too. So I'm going to be using the 9 16 Again, I don't want the stud to turn as I loosen the nut so I'm not pushing down on it. There's a lock washer down here I'm gonna need to remove. But I forget to remove it and start removing these two flat heads that hold the cover on. It's not critical, I'll realize it in just a moment as I'm gonna have trouble getting the cover off without it. Having then realized I left it on, I pry off that lock washer with a small screwdriver, we could see some RTV makes it a little bit difficult, but not impossible to remove. Working it up eventually comes right off. And now applying pressure to both of those studs, if necessary, I'm able to lift that cover off, exposing the insides of the unit. I'd mentioned in a previous video that this piece would be replaced if it ever comes off. This piece is not going back on. I'll point out that there's also a gasket on the main fixture. Mine was stuck at one location. I just decided to leave it on. There was no need to remove it. Here's the contact for the output portion of the solenoid. We could see that it looks like it could use a cleanup. I'm going to try and get a brush on here so we could do. I'm using a wire brush. This one's brass or, or bronze, but this is uh, copper. So I don't want to use anything too hard and start tearing the surface up. But we could see that after like 30 seconds with the brush, the surface cleaned right up. So now I'm going to deflect the input contact out of the way. And I'm going to do the same thing to this contact. Again, this is not new, but this surface cleaned right up. If necessary, I could probably file this to a smooth surface, if need be. Finally, I pull this metal piece out of the way to pull up this piece that actually shunts those two together. It has a spring in the middle that I found no need to remove. This one again has the contact surfaces cleaned up in the same manner. And the contacts are all cleaned, but if any of those contacts were completely destroyed, you could spring for a solenoid repair kit, which would cost less than an entirely new solenoid. If any structural damage was found inside, ultimately you'd have to spring for a whole new solenoid. At this point, the unit is cleaned out and all of the old grease removed, including the cleanup of this part as well. I apply a small amount of a high temp lithium grease to the shaft, evenly distributing the grease. I put it back in the unit, pushing that other piece out of the way so it falls in, and then move it around a couple of times to evenly distribute the grease and make sure that there is no binding. The old RTV was removed from the lock washers, and the pieces that were bent out of the way were moved back into the relative position using that centerpiece as a guide for an approximation. We can see this spring goes into the detent in the center cap. The squared end of this bolt sits into this square to stop rotating, and the square end of this smaller bolt sits into this square fitting. JP Cycles part 1028348 eight has arrived the new chrome cover. I've unpackaged the cover but left the protective cellophane on the outer shell, and I drop it onto our solenoid. The cover is then placed over centered with the studs sticking out to align everything and then pulling the studs up so that the square ends of the studs lock into position. Each one of those studs are individually jiggled back and forth as they're pulled up to make sure that they are in fact fully seated and won't rotate. This is good. At this time the flathead cover screws are then reintroduced as the cover is held steady. And these screws are tightened down. The first one is tightened down only to draw out the slack of the screw 
and then moving to the second screw, tightening down that second screw, and then coming back to the first one. The studs are then rechecked to make sure that they're sitting properly and not rotating in full seat. I'm using Honda Bond for the next step. A thicker RTV probably would have been easier, but I'm applying it around the base of the studs to fill any gaps for any possible water leakage that could come through here. And then I'm placing the nut on top, being sure not to push down on the stud as I turn, sort of pulling up as I tighten it down. And this should make a watertight fitting between the nut and the plastic case. And then I'll wipe off the excess. Orange RTV probably would have been a bit easier. This step is then repeated on the large stud. Again, I place the nut over, trying not to push down on the stud, and once I got a couple of turns, I'm actually pulling up as I turn on the nut to tighten it down. Clean up and move on to the next step. Laying the sole nut on its side, I place the mounting hardware back in, followed by the spacer, and then the spring. Aligning the whole unit and holding the two bolts as I had removed it before, I push the spring into the plunger, align the bolts, and then hold everything in place as I grab my extension to tighten them. I noticed something wrong with the new cover because the position of the holes is such that these bolts can't turn. They're binding. The corners of the bolts are binding on the cover. So I have to find a solution. So I tried this out. It's the same exact pitch and size of bolt, but it's hex. So it has a round profile and won't get caught on the cover. I attempt to repeat the process again, knowing that it's not gonna bind up on the corner of the head of the bolt. But as I'm turning it in, something's telling me that, that it's binding up somewhere else. Something's wrong here. And I stop immediately, because I don't want to cause any damage. Taking both out and recomparing them, I see that the depth from the screw holes to the end of the cover is entirely different on this JMP product. Again, not happy about this kind of stuff. So the old cover's going back in, because it's obvious the new one's not gonna fit, because the tolerances are really poor. Just not happy about this, but as I put the old cover back in, you see it screws in with no binding, absolutely no problem whatsoever. Just being sure to stagger the tightening of the bolts, and it's preloaded because there's a spring in the middle. And I'll put the three cables through the rubber boot, placing the battery connection, the first of my wires, through the eyelet. Putting on that lock washer, as well as the nut, and give that a couple of turns just to secure it. Then I'll connect the other two cables, the small low current cable for the solenoid power, as well as the switch power going to the starter. Again, giving it a few turns just to keep it in place. The two high current starter connections will now be snugged down with the wrench. And finally, we'll connect up the low current solenoid power. The rubber cap is then fully reseated onto the top of the solenoid into the grooves, wiggling back and forth to make sure. The AMF tool holds the seat in the open position, and I start the screw for the ground by hand, get a couple threads in, and then tighten it down with the wrench. Power looks good, we'll test it out. And I do not have fuel on, so I don't expect the bike to start. The start is now working reliably, no problem at all. So I'll remove my protective tape from the primary. Button up my battery, bringing this project to a conclusion. The only disappointment was the terrible chrome cover from JP Cycles. Everything else uh, was a repair that required zero money to get going again. I hope you enjoyed the maintenance and repair of the starter solenoid on the shovelhead engine. Hope you found it enjoyable, entertaining, and informative. Hey, do me a favor. Hit that like button down below, helps me out a lot when you do, and hit that subscribe button for more videos like this when they come out. When the next video in this series comes out, a link will be posted in the top right corner. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.
Would you like to reply? <laughs>